Hello everyone, it's Saturday, it's April 1st, 2023. Wanted to give you a special weather update on this incoming storm, especially for livestock interest across the region. And anybody that has designs on traveling, starting late Sunday night, but especially Monday through Wednesday, being brought to you by Cowboy State Daily and YDOT, when there's ice and snow, take it slow. So this is what we're looking at and talking about with this storm system. First of all, our confidence is quite high that we're gonna see an intense winter-like storm. I know it's spring, but this has got all the earmarks of a winter storm. And Wyoming, South Dakota, and North Dakota are in the bullseye, as well as western areas and northern areas of Nebraska. Those are the states that are gonna be the most impacted, and that's where travel and livestock concerns are gonna be the highest. We're gonna see a southwest and northeast band of heavy snow. It's gonna start as early as Sunday night into Monday morning. There's gonna be an initial area of snow developing in a very narrow band, then it's going to expand as the storm intensifies rapidly during the day Tuesday and the Tuesday night and Wednesday. There is very cold air with this storm, so this is going to be 99% snow. Believe it or not, it'll be April, but we're talking single digits to some areas below zero by early Thursday morning. You add all this up, and this is going to be a dangerous storm for young, weak, and newborn livestock. Colorado Front Range areas, well, you're going to miss out most of the storm, although there has been a very small but important more southward shift in the predictions. It looks like only the mountains and far northwest and northern areas of Colorado will see the biggest impacts, at least with snow. This is where we're going to start the weekend with a westerly flow. We talked about in earlier podcasts about a bit of a Chinook wind. So this west to east flow will make it windy but mild here for today and into Sunday. Now, by Monday afternoon, the low begins to dig in the northwest areas of Utah. There's a lot of very strong jet stream energy associated with this system, so it is going to dig further south. And the strong jet stream winds crossing the divide will end up spinning up this low and bringing it into a rapid intensification. You might be hearing some calling this a bomb cyclone, bomb genesis or whatever, but it will be a rapidly developing storm over the northern plains by the time we get into late Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, I want to show you the initial snowfall. This is the precipitation forecast that takes us through Monday afternoon. As the low digs in, we're going to see the Pacific Northwest and the interior west and parts of the Great Basin get into some developing areas of rain and snow, but notice across the Wasatch Front of Utah, then across southwest central Wyoming and south central Wyoming and the western parts of Wyoming, there's going to be snow developing overnight Sunday into the morning hours of Monday. So places like Evanston and Rock Springs and Green River, up through Lander, Riverton, Big Piney, up into Casper, up into the northern and central areas of the Shirley Basin, uh, there's going to be snow on the ground by Monday morning, then expanding eastward out along the Pine Ridge of eastern Wyoming and then heading into western Nebraska and southwestern South Dakota. So this is kind of the initial first phase. I think we kind of should look at this storm in two phases. This is phase number one, late Sunday night and Monday as the storm digs in. But then it gets over the divide and then reforms either over extreme northeast Colorado or somewhere over far southwestern areas of Nebraska. Now you're going to notice here, I'm going to show you the, the three main model suites. There's much better agreement now than we had earlier in the week, and there has been a very modest slightward southward shift in the upper level low. That's really critical. You know, there's, there's two areas uh, in far southern Wyoming, places like Laramie and Cheyenne that are on the razor's edge of the system. If the storm moves any further south, the harsh winter storm conditions will get into Laramie and Cheyenne. If it goes more north, it'll miss those areas, at least the heavy snow. It'll still snow, but the heavy snow will go north. That also means the Colorado Front Range is right on the cusp as well. But I think the way the storm is trending, most of the Colorado Front Range could breathe easy that you'll miss the heavy snow. You'll certainly get colder with a lot of wind, though. So let's compare the three models, and you can see where there's better agreement. The European, the Canadian, and the GFS or the American. Now, those may not look like really big, significant changes or differences between the two models, but it is, especially in terms of where the heavy snow will track. But that is some really good agreement. So our confidence is, is high, and we've got a lot going on here. Now what I'm gonna do is gonna show you the whole thing. 
starting from what I showed you earlier, and then now going all the way through early Thursday. So you can see that there is a, a secondary swath that develops later in the day Monday, Monday night into Tuesday that expands east northeast but also expands south along Interstate 25. So what we are going to end up with is the I-25 corridor of Wyoming down to let's say the Lander, Riverton, Casper areas and then as you get on into the Colorado border areas you'll see it right there there is going to be an intense period of heavy snow Monday night, Tuesday, in the Tuesday afternoon and evening with wind and falling temperatures. That expands into South Dakota, North Dakota, the Pine Ridge of Nebraska, then into the upper Midwest. And you can see that most of the Colorado Front Range areas, western Kansas, well, you're going to get a little bit of a snow shadow there. There won't be nearly as much. When we take a look at the snowfall forecast again, take these with a grain of salt. This is for display purposes only, but I want to show you some differences and how the cold air can make a difference. So this is using the 10 to 1 ratio, meaning one inch of rain or water would equal 10 inches of snow. So you can see some very impressive snow totals beginning to the end with this storm across Wyoming, the mountains of Colorado, but especially South Dakota, North Dakota, northwestern areas of Nebraska. When we take a look zooming in a little bit closer into Wyoming and western areas of South Dakota, Nebraska and Colorado, using the 10 to 1 ratio, very impressive snowfall amounts. And you can see right there along the Colorado Wyoming border amounts are a little bit lighter. You can also see the amounts are lighter along and north of I-90. So the storm really wants to form between I-90 and along I-80 and then north and eastward from there. Now if we were to take the what's called the Kuchera way of putting together snowfall forecast that includes the fact that the air is going to be a lot colder than that 10 to 1 ratio is using. Again, this is for display purposes only. This is way overdoing it. But what we may end up seeing is sort of a, let's say the snowfall amount falling somewhere in between that 10 to 1 ratio and this one. So the first one I showed you was kind of what the lower end will be. This shows you what the extreme would be. And usually the extremes don't happen. But nonetheless, what we're showing you here, and this is a good graphic to show you where we think the heavier snow will be. So you can look at the counties of Wyoming, western South Dakota, northwest Nebraska, where you live and where you're going to be the most impacted by the storm. And yes, there's going to be a lot of wind. Notice how this storm initially brings the high winds to Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. And then we see some very intense winds developing Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, and Wednesday, especially across the Dakotas. So we'll use the B word. It'll end up being a blizzard in some areas of the Dakotas, far eastern Wyoming, far northern areas of Nebraska when it's all said and done. Look at these overnight forecasted low temperatures for Thursday morning. That doesn't look like April, does it? So this is going to be a snow that will stick, accumulate with some very cold temperatures and wind chills behind this system. Now we will update you tomorrow. This is the same uh, for the same time frame showing you a little bit more over a larger region. So you can see those gray areas going below zero. I will send an update for you tomorrow morning sometime, Sunday morning. In the meantime, we'll continue to monitor the situation and we'll update you tomorrow.